Hi guys, if the thoughts of making your own homemade bread scare the living bejesus out of you, then this is the recipe for you. This is a no need focaccia and it is incredibly popular across the internet right now, particularly because of how easy it is to make. It's only a handful of store cupboard ingredients, but it results in the most light, chewy, crisp focaccia with a golden top. And with this focaccia, I'm gonna finish it off with some basil and garlic rubbed over the top as it goes into the oven to give you the most spectacular focaccia results. Now the recipe comes down to a few key factors. Firstly, it's not a whole heap of complicated ingredients. I've just got plain flour, honey, a little bit of yeast, some warm water and salt. That is literally it. And if you can nail those ingredients, then you can make this recipe. The rest of it comes down to the time it takes to allow that yeast to do its work, to form beautiful bubbles and plenty of olive oil to give you that really gorgeous intensity of flavor and texture that you get from really good focaccia. So we're gonna start off by adding some yeast to some warm water with a little bit of honey to help activate it. And then once that blooms, straight into our dry ingredients. So because I'm using dried yeast here, I'm gonna allow it to bloom. It takes about 15 minutes. The warm water and the sweetness of the honey is gonna activate the yeast and you should see a beautiful layer of foam that builds up on top of this jug. Now while that's foaming, we're gonna get on with our dry ingredients. I've got some plain flour and some salt that go into the bowl. Okay, our yeasty, watery mixture is now frothing and looking good, so I'm gonna add this straight into our dry ingredients and mix this until we have a wet dough. Now, traditionally, when you make focaccia, it's quite a wet dough, but the beauty of this particular method is that while it is still a wet dough, you barely have to touch it. And we're gonna use quite a lot of olive oil to keep this as pliable as possible. Now, once your dough is looking like this, it's quite a wet consistency, we're gonna transfer it to a really well-oiled bowl and we're gonna leave it to sit overnight or as long as possible. We can come back to it and tend to it and just fold it in amongst itself to create those bubbles that are so natural with your focaccia. But once it's at this point, that's pretty much all the work done. Now, it does look incredibly wet at this point in time, but have faith. Take a little bit of oil onto your hands. It's also good for if you have very cracked hands, if you've been uh, hand sanitizing too much. Stick the olive oil around your hands, and what we're gonna do is get in here and fold this over itself to create nice little air pockets. So straight in, and just fold it in on top of itself. You're capturing a little bit of oil as you do this. There is moments here where it looks like this is never gonna come together, but have faith, use that oil, and what you should be left with is a nice dough that'll hold its shape. And at this point now, once you fold it a couple of times, we're gonna cover it with cling film, get it into the fridge, and it's gonna rise slowly, but overnight. Now, I love the idea that you can do that tiny bit of work at the start of this recipe, leave it to sit in the fridge and the fridge does all the work and then the next morning you come to reveal a bowl of beautiful bubbling focaccia dough that is ready to be turned out. Now there is one more step to this rise. It needs to go into this tin, get into shape and then it's gonna rise for about an hour. But before we do that, olive oil in, dough in and let's get it in shape. Okay, so once you have this in pretty good shape, you can oil your hands if you need it, but there's plenty of oil in this dough, so you should be able to just pat it down and it shouldn't stick. So once you have spread it out evenly to all sides of this baking dish, it's now gonna rest and rise again for one more hour, and then it's into the oven for some cooking. Okay, this is where we need to be. Our focaccia has had its time to rise. It's doubled and now you can see those little air pockets, those bubbles forming, which are gonna give us that classic focaccia. At this point now, you can take it in any direction flavor-wise you like. You could just finish it with sea salt and get it in the oven. But personally, my favorite way to finish it is with some garlic and some basil, which you bash to a paste with some sea salt and then spread it over the top. So let's get bashing.
Okay, this is where you need to be at. A beautiful, vibrant, herby garlic paste that's gonna go over the top of our focaccia. We're gonna indent it with our fingers and then it's into the oven to bake at 220 degrees Celsius until we've got a nice, golden and crisp focaccia loaf. Just look at that. After it's had its time in the oven, it's come out, it's cooled, you should be left with a beautiful golden focaccia. I've just doused it with a tiny bit more oil, but now is the moment of truth. Let's cut right into it. There's still a lovely run of oil through this, and that is what you're after. Really gorgeous little air pockets. Let's try some. Mm. Oh, that is just so good. It's crispy on the bottom, crispy on the top. In the center, this lovely sort of light, chewy dough that is flavored with garlic and basil and lots of salt. This is absolutely gorgeous. It takes minimal work and you get really fantastic results. If you want the full recipe, as always, it'll be in the box below and you can get it over my website. Make sure you hit subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. And of course, leave a comment below letting me know if you're gonna try this recipe and what ingredients you would top your focaccia with. Until then, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna try not to eat the entire loaf, but this is so good. So give it a go and I'll see you soon. Mm.